Welcome to Mining Now product promo. I'm your host, Jared Downey. And today we have back on the show from, uh, we filmed at SME. This is v- remote. Phoenix. What's that? Yeah, in Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah. We were, yeah, that was remote. I was in the studio, nice and glitchy. It was great fun. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> is there anything more awkward than a crew just showing up, sticking a camera like, hey, talk to this guy? And <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it was an experience for everyone, I think. My apologies. <laughs> we, were doing not, the, we were doing the best we could at the time. Yeah, not nice to meet you in person. Good finally. to meet you in person, Brendan. Uh, Brendan Parker, you're the president uh, and the founder of, of AMPS. We should mention that. Um, our audience, I would say, has grown considerably since then. Uh, so let's do an intro. You know, why did you found the company? Who is Amps? Let's go through it all. Sure. So uh, I founded Amps back in 2011, and it was uh, basically in a need for uh, mining engineers training and mentoring. Uh, so we saw a decline in um, mining engineering skills, and we stepped into that role to be able to provide uh, training, mentoring, upskilling mining engineers. In the last 14 years, we've now grown to a team of just under 100 people. Have you been around for 14 years? Yeah. Oh, wow. And you've, yeah, so that, that's pretty steady growth then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And and what, um, has has the industry changed at all? Or, I, I mean, your growth would tell me that the demand is still there. <laughs> there is definitely a demand in there for yeah. professional services. What, how did you know um, at the time, what did you see in the market that you understood, okay, there's a, there's a real opportunity here? Uh, as, as I say, just the decline in knowledge. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of people exiting the industry, uh, either leaving or retiring, and not enough mentoring and training of new professionals coming through. So we're losing a lot of that knowledge in the industry as a whole. Are you getting people with mining engineering backgrounds sort of trained or are you even trying to bring, are, do you ever get involved in bringing people from other industries and integrating them in? A little bit. Yeah. Not, not a lot though. Primarily our market is mining engineers, geologists, and over here in America, uh, mine surveying as well. So qualified mine surveyors. So what, what does the training look like? What, what is the, the process that we're actually talking about going through? This, this is so much easier when I'm actually talking to you. I'm realizing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Audio works much better like this. Yeah, exactly. You actually, know, you actually know what I'm saying. You're not just guessing. Um, yeah, what is, what is the actual, what are you actually delivering like to an engineer? So we really focus on the operational side of things. Okay. So we look at the systems, the processes for a mining operation. We then also uh, pair that together with engineer or geology training and mentoring to upskill them personally as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of improving the systems, the processes, and how to do things on a mine site, and then all the training and mentoring to improve the skills of uh, mining engineers. I guess I need to clarify. So there's a gap in even people that are available. So you're not necessarily filling that gap, right, Uh, in the sense that you're not you're not training new engineers, but you're trying to get them, you're training them to be placed in certain environments. And um, taking them to the next level. So right. junior engineers, people that are new into the industry, right. we can provide some So they've got training. their piece of paper, yep. but they're not, they're not ready for That's right. the big mine. Yeah. yeah. So we, we provide mining engineers to support operations, so site-based operational support. And then we also uh, do the mentoring and the training to upskill their existing staff, yeah. which helps in their retention of employees as well. What is it? So what are some of the examples then, like the, where you can actually help people like refine their skills to, so they actually specialize? Uh, so one of the first things we did, um, well, probably eight or nine years ago now, is we developed a underground drill and blast training course, mm. and so it was an in-person course. So we could take engineers through the common or daily concepts and tasks that they'll need to do and what the challenges that they come up against Mm -hmm. uh, at a mining operation. So we've put through over 500 mining engineers in that time through our course. 500. And it's taking them from a basic level of knowledge and providing them the skills and training they need to go to the next level and do something better at the operations they're working on. What was the process of even developing that that course? That's that must be a pretty in depth. We, to be honest, we are not training people. Engineers are not great at delivering uh, training content. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but we just put all of our knowledge down and started pulling things together, thinking about what are the challenges a mining engineer faces. How can we provide some uh, practical tips and lessons on how they can learn those skills? 
let's say there's an engineer, they've got experience and they're working on operating mine. Now there's a contractor that's working on a whole bunch of different mines. Mm -hmm. That one person, maybe they've worked for five, maybe even 10 years at this one mine. So yep. they're, are, they're really good at this one stream, but they're limited yep. in there. So if they're going to work for a contractor now, that seems like there would be an opportunity for you to then train them and get them ready for that. So AMPS as a whole, um, we actually do that contract work. Oh, you're actually delivering that? Yeah. Okay. So we, we've got engineers to do all the contract work on the mine site. Right. But then we've got that training part that we train and upskill clients engineers as well oh okay. so we're, we're doing a bit of both oh you're doing a bit of both yeah okay so in that operational support we need to provide engineers so the clients can carry on day-to-day -day work but we also need to upskill engineers and professionals in the industry to do things better what is the two are there is there sort of a few like the the common uh disciplines that you you sort of specialize in or is it pretty broad um, it's fairly broad now that we've grown over yeah. the years. Initially, it was underground drill and blast because that was my background. Right. We've now broadened that out into planning and scheduling, um, underground and open pit. So we've got a team that covers pretty much anything you can think of in a mining, engineering, or geology space. So what is your primary deliverable on, on site? What's this, What are the services you're, you're most focused on? So we provide site-based operational support for mining engineers, geology, and here in North America, um, qualified mine surveyors. So we contract people out to support mining operations. And part of that is um, providing some training and upskilling of employees. So mm. that's both our AMPS employees, but also clients' employees. Mm. Um, so they can uh, retain people uh, on their mine site. So this is while you're doing, so while you're doing the contract, you're sort of upgrading skill sets for both your team and for theirs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So is that part of, is when, when you are, let's say, let's say bidding on a job, I, I guess, is that part of your, your, like your competitive advantage that they're going to get this added value that when you're gone, they, their people are that much better. That's exactly what we want to do. Yeah. We want to try. Brilliant. Train, train yeah. the people that are already on site so they can carry things forward. Right. So you actually have a system, though. That you're not just, it's not like, hey, Shadow wasn't watches. You actually have a system in place. Like they're taking a course while you're on the, con you're doing this contract. Yeah. So we, we do have some structured uh, mentoring and training programs right. that we can run through. Um, so there's a combination of things that we are able to provide. And it's all focused on improving mining professionals' knowledge and skills uh, throughout the industry. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the first person to ask. Is this? Uh, is there an element of train yourself out of a job? Um, there's such a demand for good mining engineers right. and geologists at the moment. So I don't think we are, and mining's never going to go anywhere. Right. So we haven't seen it. We're still so busy with work, and even though we're improving operations, we've still got plenty of work going on. I just want to want to get a picture in my mind. If let's say I'm your client. And I'm I'm looking at these different bids from an op like from what I ex expect from your operations. How is it going to be different? You know, this bid is coming to do the work. You're coming in with sort of this up, you know, this kind of this uh, upscaling of skill sets. Yeah. Um. So how does that operationally? What is the difference that that I'll actually see on the ground? So as a, as I mentioned, we we actually do the work, but we're upskilling people on site. So they are then got the skills to be able to improve how their operation runs, improve their performance, um, improve what their stopes and their um, open pits sort of production profile yeah. looks like. They can start doing that themselves and yeah. they, don't, they don't need us as much. Yeah. The problem is there's not enough mining engineers to do all this work right. because we're our contract. That's why you get the in. contracts in That's the first right. place. Yeah. 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 So how does, uh, I, I have to ask how monetarily, how much is that? If I, again, if I'm looking at two quotes and you're providing all this added value, is it, can it still be competitive with it's, the, yeah. it's still very competitive because mm -hmm. it's still a person on site. Right. So yes, we've got some systems processes, some IP that we use for our training, but we're able to provide that to the client because we're doing the contract work at the same time. So what does it look like in terms of market? Cause, uh, you're now operating, uh, well, wh where are you operating in now? So we've now expanded into North America. Okay. So head, head office is still in Perth in Western Australia. When did you do that expansion? Uh, so we started sort of doing the expansion last year. 
right. 2024. When we were talking in SME, talking you SME. were just getting going on that, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. So we've now got uh, people in the US and also in Canada, locally based, uh, providing our services over here already. And I'm actually moving uh, my family uh, to Vancouver. Uh, to oh, we're going to be, be neighbours. Yeah. Oh, there you go. All there right. You go. You can tell me all the good places to yeah. go. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm moving to Vancouver so we can drive all of that North American expansion. You're going lo- to love the coffee. Really? No. Coming from Australia? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That's a big call. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I hear it all the time. Okay, so, uh, you know, one, one day, well, I mean, Australians should be coming here and opening coffee shops if our coffee's so bad. There's an opportunity there. Yeah. Um, so what is, uh, okay, so now you're actually, you're actually going to be set up in Canada. So you're still operating in Australia, though. Yes. Yeah. So I've um, basically taken myself out of the Australian business and I've put in a new CEO. So oh, she's cool. been there for the last nine months, and now I'm able to transition out of the Australian operation and drive all the North American expansion, but with all of the support from the Australian business. Uh, where do you think, uh, I mean, I don't want to, you to give away trade secrets, but where do you think the limit is? Because with the demand, I mean, I feel like you could service 20% of the market and you wouldn't even have scraped the surface because by the next, if you took that metric by the next year, it'd only be about 5% of the market because the demand's so great. Yeah. Um, where, what is the potential? Like as you scale, have you had any challenges scaling or it's just a matter of how much you can reach the, the, the clients essentially? Yeah. I mean, it's um, finding the operations that n- need or want some of that support to get, do, uh, do things better. Yeah. Um, so we haven't, we haven't seen a slowdown in our, um, our demand. Right. So coming over here into North America, it is a brand new market for us. And that's why I'm here to generate some brand awareness. People, um, will hopefully realize who we are and what we can do. Um, and some of the benefits that they can get from getting amps on board. What is, uh, I always like to ask this question just so it's not just a, a, a full, uh, just promotion of your company, but also the, the, the real challenges that people are having. When you're in talks with someone, what is some of the either people are confused by, the challenges, uh, the reason it's not a good fit? What are some of the tougher questions that you have to answer? Um, I suppose one of the challenges that we see is a lot of people have only been to one operation. And so they don't know what else is out there and what else good actually mm-hmm. looks like. So it's very hard for us to come in and say, well, there might be some other opportunities that we can look at here. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Right. So that's probably one of the challenges uh, and one of the questions that we need to sort of um, navigate when we're dealing in the North American market. How do you answer that question? Uh, We need to sit down, try and show people what the opportunities are and how it's either going to improve their workflow Mm -hmm. or improve their performance. So they're actually on board with the idea before we can actually do anything. So one of the other things I wanted to uh, discuss is in North America, we're also providing qualified mine surveyors, which is something we don't do in Australia. Mm. So we have a team of specialist mine surveyors that are all qualified and they assist in solving complex uh, network issues, so control network issues in mining operations. And it's something that's overlooked quite a lot in a sense of, mergers and acquisitions, um, under, doing due mm-hmm. diligence on a, uh, on a sale of a, a, a project, a lot of people don't understand or check the survey network before making that acquisition. Mm. So there's a really big space that we're moving into at the moment, uh, which is really exciting because it's new for me. And we've got some specialist mine surveyors on board, um, providing a lot of their expertise into the North American market as well. Did you know that that was an... Uh, that was going to be part of your, your push in the North American market when you came here? Initially, no. Oh. Uh, but then we've identified some gaps there uh, and set up a department s- specifically for um, mine surveying. And has it already been successful? It has been, yeah. Very, very good. I have to ask. Do some people just go, no, no, we just need the service. Don't don't train us. <laughs> don't make us better. No. Everyone's saying we want the training. Right. Okay. But we don't need the service. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. It's the opposite. Yeah, that's funny. Um no, it's it's good to have you back on the show. Um, yeah, I, again, I remember. I mean, last year was it was what it was, right? Um, oh, oh, and, right. and now things change. Uh, it's it's quite exciting to hear that expansion. I mean, just a year ago, it was just yeah, you were just talking like yeah, we're just getting into the market, and now you're so you said you're in the U.S. operating. Yep. And and, and Ghana. And Ghana as well. No, Canada. And Canada. Sorry. So we're already operating here. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's, it's always fun. I, I mean, that's quite a bit of success in a year. So congratulations yeah, and uh, nice. hopefully we do it again. All right. Thank you everybody for watching. If you want to connect with Brendan, uh, we'll put his LinkedIn in the description. And of course the amps website, you can click there and go visit, um, learn more about what they do that we didn't cover on the episode. And also make sure to hit subscribe for mining now. Thank you everybody for watching the mine now product promo. See you on the next episode.